So tell me, what shall I do with these hands of mine? What shall I do with these hands of mine? Hi everybody, it's week four of Global Music Match and we're very excited to be interviewing Dave Gunning, who is this week's featured artist. Hi Dave, how are you doing? Great, yeah, thanks for connecting. And uh, are you there in your home studio? Is that home studio I can see? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a uh, guitar amp there, and mm. and uh, yeah, everything's ready to go here anytime. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I bet that's been great during lockdown. Yeah. Um, ironically, though, I was I was um, I was writing a lot of songs up until March, and then when things got weird, I, I, I was I sort of went into survival mode, like what's next. But I've been starting to get into the writing again now, so. Yeah, no, it's funny, I felt exactly the same, like it, it yeah, was an amazing yeah. gift to have so much time, but at first I was just so freaked out that yeah, doing the gardening yeah. seemed to take precedence to me. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we ended up doing a album of traditional material because Hannah hadn't written any songs, so <laughs> um, yeah. it kept us busy anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's great, great to keep those songs alive and, and circulating anyway. Yeah, exactly. That was our thought, really. Yeah. Um, how are your chickens? Oh, they're great. Yeah. Um, we we wanted to have just um, hens for eggs, so we waited till our neighbor could sex the chickens. You know, they know a lot about chickens, so they gave us uh, four hens, but they all turned out to be roosters. All four of them. <laughs> oh no! I was feeding them growers mash and layers mash and doing doing everything. It's like where are the friggin' eggs? <laughs> 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 That's such a shame. So you haven't had any eggs at all. Well, we do now. We we adopted four hens from a. We rescued them from an egg factory. They they only keep them till they're about a year old or eighteen months, and then oh, grind yeah. them up for dog food. So, like yeah. once they get to a certain size, they can't fit thirty thousand of them in a building anymore. So we we rescued these four hens, and they're laying every day. And mm -hmm. first time they've ever seen real grass. It's like they, oh, they it's okay. it's it's actually heart. It was heartbreaking, but in a good way. Like to see them. They're just so happy to be like real ground, real sunlight. You know, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and, and we kept one rooster, and he's he's pretty happy about it. So. Yeah, yeah I bet he is. <laughs> we don't even know if he's doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I'm glad you got your eggs in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, talking about lockdown, we've been listening to your most recent album, Up Against the Sky, and I, I really like the song "In the Time I Was Away." about kind of the things that you miss when you're on the road all the time and I was wondering if if you feel like having everything cancelled and suddenly being at home for so long has changed how you feel about touring at all. Well I, like I was always um, someone who enjoyed being home the most you know I, I really feel fortunate to be able to, to make music for a living but um, I think that maybe I don't know I, I see I think I come from a long line of farmers who never left home you know yeah and um I, I still live in the area where i grew up so you know the crows know me here it seems you know <laughs> it, it's in it's it's just uh and with we have three boys so it it's it's uh um well judd's 16 and will's 14 and gus is 10 so it's been a nice time to be home to uh you know it, there's been some blessings with it i guess you know i i yeah. uh, I, I do miss the travels as well, but but um, I'm sure that'll come back in time. And in the meantime, we're just once we figured out how we were going to survive, we we've been actually kind of enjoying some of the home time. And yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I feel quite similar myself. Actually, the bit I love about music is the music, really, and everything yeah. else is extra, isn't it? And gigs are lovely, but the, the traveling and stuff in between can be so grueling. And something that I've felt for a long time is about the sort of environmental impact of touring and how yeah. how we're all going to deal with that really because it's yeah. it's undeniably not very good to be flying around the world all the time and then um, right. I was reading about your own environmental activism I think that's really inspiring stuff you've got involved with and yeah. um, I just um, I wondered how much you think songs or art in general can actually affect change well yeah, I mean that was uh, that pulp and paper issue was a cause that I worked on for close to a decade, 
I know more about pulp and paper than I do about folk music at this point. <laughs> and we, we formed a group and, you know, at the end of it, we had three pulp and paper experts on our group and two scientists that worked for Environment Canada. And we had a lot of doctors and lawyers and, and business people. And we knew so much about that. And we, we took it on as a, my brother said, well, we're not really going to be activists. We're going to be factivists, you know, and mm -hmm. just build this case brick by brick with facts and documents. And um, I was worried that at the time that I was spending so much time, as much as 30 or 40 hours a week on this, on this issue, um, that I wasn't spending any time on my music. And I, I was really worried that I, I wasn't going to be able to write. But yeah. it turned out to be the opposite. Um, and I, I think it's because it was something that I was so passionate about that I, w I felt inspired to, to start writing songs. And um, all of a sudden, all these songs started coming. And, and, uh, and I felt good about singing them. And yeah. I think that a lot of our heroes, and uh, I know from reading about you guys as well, that, uh, you know, that the, a lot of our favorite songwriters over the years were the ones that had an audience and made really good use of it, you know? Yeah. And, and not necessarily by being really preachy or being really aggressive, but by being sneaky and putting lyrics in there that make just people think about things a little bit. And, you know, we're all living on the same planet and, and to, you know, we all kind of have to work together, you know, it's yeah. uh, it, like, we can't just focus on one little area or anything like that. It's a, it's, we're all together in this. It'd be, be, be like having a no peeing section in a swimming pool. You know, we're all, <laughs> we're all connected. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Yeah. It's, um, it's a funny thing, isn't it? I think sometimes it feels a little bit, um, things feel a bit hopeless, but actually I think music's yeah, a really powerful yeah. way to make people think. And, and yeah. yeah. And I noticed that you said Pete Seeger is one of your heroes. Which oh, is, for sure. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, talk, you talk about a person who practiced what they preached. And uh, yeah. I actually became friends with, um, well, one of his best friends, um, a man who, well, he was, he witnessed the signing of Pete's will. Like they were very close and, Pete was, uh, yeah, he was the real deal, you know, the he, way he lived his life and, and um, it's, yeah, inspiring. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, some people have, like, when we were fighting this issue with the mills, people said, well, so when are you going to run for politics? And I would say, well, I wouldn't do that for $10 million a year. <laughs> I wouldn't, <laughs> I feel that we have a, have the best seat now to affect change. You know, we, we're lucky as artists that we have this opportunity to, uh, to, get our messages out in however way, you know, gently or however we want to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's really important. Really important. Mm -hmm. well, back to the uh, recording side of things. Um, have you always recorded your own stuff or is that a more recent? Um... Uh, I started back in, in 1999, maybe, starting to record my own stuff, but I would, uh, I, I would take it, you know, somewhere else to have it mixed or mastered and that over the years I've been doing more and more. Yeah. And, um, it's something that I enjoy doing. And I guess it used to be that the technical side would sort of distract me from the making art side, but now I've done it for so long that it's second nature. I don't even really think about the technical stuff yeah. anymore. And I don't really sweat about where the mic is placed. I just, I kind of just, go for it you know yeah yeah, yeah. It can be difficult working on your own stuff a little bit can't we? it's kind of um slightly new territory for us at the moment we've been recording at, at home just out of necessity because we couldn't go anywhere else to record yeah and it's yeah i feel like i'm at the start of a very long learning curve but i'm i'm enjoying it so yeah well, that's, yeah that's and there's really, really there's really no right or wrong with with this stuff and mm. Lately, uh, like Mark Lang from Australia came over to, and we worked here, and he said, you know, don't worry about getting everything shiny and new sounding. You know, the element of rust in the music is great. Let's just use some room mics, and if we get a bit of noise in the background, who cares? You know, it's mm -hmm. and it's about capturing a bit of magic, and and so so now I often I'll turn on a mic that's fairly close to me, and I'll fire up a room mic too in the distance, and mm -hmm. just kind of see what I get. <laughs> I think I think some of my favorite records are the ones where you get those sounds in the background that make yeah. you just sense that it's real and live. It's not just being polished out of existence. You know, it's really yeah. vital. Yeah, there's, still. There's, 
Got out. Something special, something special in the air. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Completely agree. And what's the Atlantic string machine? Oh, yeah. heard mention of that <laughs> in the uh, biography. Yeah, they're a uh, uh, five-piece string group based in Prince Edward Island. Oh, and um, they, th there are three of them in the group who, who, um, who write as well. So, I, you know, I just basically sent them a guitar vocal and they um, created a string arrangement um, for four of my songs and came over and recorded them. Uh, just and they're 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 beautiful musicians and they they're great uh, at reading music but they're but they're also if you took their music away they'd they'd play something beautiful too it's it's the, yeah the, the best of both worlds with them yeah that's fantastic isn't it I think sometimes classical players can be quite um, inhibited about playing without music but like you say the yeah. technical skill with the improvisation is is the thing yeah that they're they're magic yeah yeah. Mm. And I suppose blending styles is something that I can hear in your music a lot because um, a lot of your songwriting's that kind of great Americana tradition, but there's a real um, sort of Celtic influence I'm hearing, like Irish stuff. I wondered if, if that's music that you're particularly into as well or if you have a, a family history. Well, from... Atlantic Canada, um, where, I, where I'm from, there are, there's a long uh, tradition of uh, Cape Breton fiddling and uh, and down east fiddling as well so um i grew up listening to a lot of that local music um whether it you know, was from the mainland or from you know down east music from the maritimes or whether it was the cape breton um celtic music or fiddle music and so start starting out and over the years i've played with a lot of cape breton fiddle players accompanying the fiddle tunes and and um touring with some of them and uh, the music that I really was drawn to was, um, you know, a lot of the time has been that that music that has that Celtic influence. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's something that we have in common. Yeah. You know, and I I there's groups from the UK. I mean, years ago when I when I first heard the Old Blind Dogs, I just fell in love with them. The, you know, it was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ian Vincey was the lead singer, I think, back in, uh, but just uh, incredible. Um, so yeah, so I when I write, uh, you know, s some of that, some shades of that do does, uh, you know, does end up in the music for sure. Yeah, it's really nice, really nice. We like it a lot. <laughs> so um, when when uh, lockdown is all over and you're back to touring again, do you, do you ever tour the UK? Do you ever come over to England? I was yeah, I have I have played there in the past, um, a couple of times in England and four times in Ireland, and I was supposed to come to the Cambridge Folk Festival uh, this year but yeah. uh, and there were a few other dates that they were they were looking at booking but uh, that, that didn't pan out but uh, I'm looking forward to coming <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well we'd, we'd really love to see you over here sometime Dave so um, yeah. yeah yeah I can't wait to see you in person and, and yeah thanks so much. It'll happen yeah <laughs> it's been great yeah. to you. thanks for taking the time to chat to us. Yeah, Thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. So tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? What shall I do with these hands of mine? What shall I do with these hands of mine?